Breaking the Wall to Climate Action. A report from COP27. Johann Rockström, Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. On November 9th, 1989, I was just returning from Estonia, talking to student leaders, dreaming of freedom. Right when I was back in Stockholm, the wall fell. I was surprised it happened so quickly. Surprised, but very happy. Dear friends from the Falling Wall Science community, we're talking here directly from COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh, a critical COP meeting one year after the Glasgow COP26. It's urgent for countries in the world to deliver on all the pledges. Everything is negotiated. All the Paris Accord texts are in place. Now is the time to accelerate the pathway towards a zero carbon, future for humanity within just 30 years, but also to put the finance on the table for adaptation, for support for mitigation in developing countries, but also to help those who are hit hardest by climate extremes through the loss and damage agenda. So there's a lot at stake here. We meet at a point of global low in trust and really frustration with regards to the lack of pace of delivery. So let's see what happens. The role of science in these meetings, I would argue, is very significant. We play a role of providing the latest scientific updates, one of them being that 1.5 degrees Celsius is not just a compromise from polity, it's also a critical threshold that science shows we do not want to go beyond because then we risk irreversible changes in the Greenland ice sheet, in the West Antarctic ice sheet, thawing up permafrost and loss of coral reefs across the world. So science helps in providing the diagnostics. Some science that I have provided myself has, for example, been on introducing the carbon law, which is now being used as a, as a main guide for the mitigation pathway, which says that if we are to have any chance of holding the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit in the Paris Accord, we need to cut emissions by half every decade, the carbon law. That is now set in, in law in the European Union. You have over 70 countries in the world that actually have net zero pathways that align with 45 to 50% emission reductions by 2030. So science plays a role in guiding policy throughout this process. But it's also true that science shows very clearly that we're moving too slowly. <laughs> 